students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Couch and Valley here in Western Canada. I hope that you have all had an awesome week and I hope you're looking forward to a fantastic weekend. Students, in this class we will be looking at IELTS Writing Task 2 the second task of the writing section and the main task of the writing section if you will it's worth about 60% uh, of your writing section mark total and it takes about 40 minutes uh, this topic uh, for this task two uh, will be about uh, learning on mobile phones. So using our mobile phones to learn, which maybe many of you are doing for this class. So uh, IELTS task two writing, uh, you cannot predict what the question will be. There are new questions all the time. So the most important for IELTS writing task two is that you have a very, very clear idea of the language, the grammar, and the structure, and the content that goes into this task, uh, including, of course, the planning. So how do you plan a good essay that has good information? And for those high bands in the writing section, you really do need to have not just good English, but you need to have good content, so good information in your essay as well. Uh, welcome, Carolina, our chat moderator. Nice to see you in the class. Uh, Sanjay. Uh, members, welcome. Mittal, Joy, Tushar, Anahita, good to see many of our regular students and new students uh, in the class with me today. This class, everyone, is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Please visit us there. We've got lots of help uh, for you for the writing section as well as the other sections. For the general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. Writing tasks too for the academic and for the general are pretty much the same. Um, they're both 250-word uh, essays. They're both usually uh, persuasive essays. And um, either one can be uh, about discussing both sides of an argument, the advantages, disadvantages, uh, or giving your own opinion and so forth. So they are persuasive essays. We'll talk more about that. Our uh, websites, they look like uh, this. I will show you in just a moment. This is our Academic IELTS website here with the uh, blue background. And you can click this big red button right there just above my head to join our premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. And as you can kind of see, well, this way, uh, there, um, we are an IDP uh, and British Council partner. Uh, we uh, work closely uh, with these uh, IELTS entities. I myself am a British Council uh, agent, so you're in good hands with us. And for the general IELTS, you want to go to gieltshelp.com. It's this green background, and click this big red button button there to join uh, the uh, premium IELTS package. Again, it's a one-time payment uh, right there uh, for lifetime access, and it doesn't cost a lot. We use these websites basically as the textbooks, materials for these live classes, so it's really good to have access. We use them for our speaking um, and many, many more functions, so uh, check them out. Audio for the listening. All right. Um, and of course, yeah, we've still got this discount code Fluent9 going on. It's one of our better discounts. Uh, it's a 25% discount. Uh, so when you're uh, checking out the websites and you're like, yeah, hey, this is for me. This is good material. I need it. I want to get the app for my phone. I want to get the access to the website. Then use this code Fluent9 for a 25% discount on the web app. Okay, not on the mobile app, but on the web app. Um, and... Um, the apps themselves in your app store are uh, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. If you have questions uh, about IELTS, about English, about studying in a foreign country, 
um, send me an email to adrian at uh, aehelp.com and uh, I will get back to you on your inquiry. Uh, students, we've got the task two class right now and then uh, tomorrow uh, we will have um, the speaking part two class for members as regularly scheduled and then we will have speaking part three for everyone so we've got a couple more classes for you tomorrow and then I will be posting uh, the following week's schedule afterwards so uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel hit that notification button so you know when these live classes are happening and so that you can keep up with the learning and uh, progress nicely with your English uh, language and communication um, you can also check out our videos that we upload in HD uh, to uh, YouTube as well. I'll uh, put the latest link into uh, the uh, chat so you can check it out there. That's one of our most recent videos and it's a good one. Um, so uh, check that out. Eugene, I'm doing great. Mal, uh, hi, how are you? All right. Yes, British accent is good. American accent is good. Uh, pronunciation accents don't matter too much for your out speaking. Just make sure to speak clearly. Okay. All right, everyone. So let's get into um, today's uh, writing task two. So writing task two, it's quite interesting. Uh, usually uh, this has been the last uh, task uh, or the last part of your IELTS exam because the IELTS exam most of the time is structured as the uh, listening section 50 minutes followed by the reading section one hour and then followed by the writing section one hour and that's task one for 20 minutes and then finally task two for 40 minutes however um, as we have mentioned in one of our videos on the channel uh, IDP in India is trying a new system where for the paper-based exam uh, they are putting the writing section first so uh, the reason for that is they want to see how candidates do on writing when um, it's the first task and they have more energy uh, for writing which kind of gives you a hint that when you get to the writing section of the IELTS exam whether your writing section is at the start of the exam and you're in India or whether it's uh, at the end of your exam in most parts of the world uh, you need good energy for the writing section so you have to you know take a deep breath get refocused uh, and uh, and really pay attention to the steps uh, necessary to perform well so spend 40 minutes on the task. It's a very good idea. About five minutes of that should be planning, uh, five, six minutes even. And then about uh, four or five minutes should be uh, review. Okay, so your actual writing time is only about 30 minutes. And I know a lot of people, you know, they complain. They say, well, 40 minutes is not a lot of time to write an essay. But, I mean, it is, okay? So um, let me give you a little bit of kind of background information so you have some clarity here, okay? So uh, four to, let's say, six minutes is planning the essay, okay? Uh, good planning, just keep this in mind, okay? So good planning uh, leads to fast writing, fast and quality. So it's not a waste of time to plan your essay, okay? And with some questions, it's extremely difficult to write a good essay if you don't plan, all right? So um, five to six minutes, and then four to six minutes, or sorry, four to five minutes will be your review. And of course, everything in between is your writing time. So uh, let's call that 30 minutes. So really, you, you should be thinking about your 250 word essay is 30 minutes, okay, of writing time and then four to five minutes of review time um, and in your review time you are looking for uh, critical coherence mistakes spelling and grammar mistakes 
Okay, so that's what you're doing. So that's basically how you should think about your time. Okay, so five to six minutes planning the essay, 30 minutes writing time, four to five minutes review time. Now, the reason that you need to really, you know, think about this uh, in this way as well, especially for a lot of you academic IELTS students, um, is uh, think about this. So just keep this in mind. So keep in mind... Uh, and I like to, you know, give you these facts so you're not surprised by it. So keep in mind that in college and university, you will have uh, written exams for a lot of majors, okay, um, even in like a computer science or engineering class, you can have written exams that are 90 minutes long and you're expected uh, to write, um, you know, up to a thousand words, right? So keep in mind that in college and university, you often have written exams that are 90 minutes in length and require you to write high quality essays that are uh, 750 words or more, which basically means like three times the length of your task too, okay? So that's why um, IELTS does this, because they know that somebody who wants to study and who wants to use English in university, they need to have this level of, of speed and ability, okay, to do well. So keep that in mind, okay? All right, um, so let's take a look at the question for today. Okay, step one is always to read the question carefully. And then paraphrase it. All right. Um, so let's do that right now. Let's read this question carefully and then let's paraphrase it. Uh, do this with me, okay? So when I'm reading, read with me. Uh, copy words that I say. Um, write down new vocabulary. Write down definitions as I give them to you. Okay, uh, here we go, everybody. So many people are choosing to learn using their mobile phones. Uh, discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this trend and give your own opinion. Use explanations and examples from your own experience. Write at least 250 words. Okay, and here it says write at least uh, 250 words, uh, which means that's the minimum. Okay, a lot of students, especially those going for band 7 or higher, will be writing more than 250 words. They'll be closer to 300, 350 even. If you've got good typing speed, which you should have, then um, writing 250 words, the typing itself should not be a problem. Okay. All right. Um, so let's paraphrase this. Okay. Paraphrasing means that you're using synonyms, you're using grammar, you're using antonyms with negatives to express the same information, but in your own words. Now, in good paraphrasing, you want to make sure that you don't add information that's not there and you don't change information, so you don't remove information what is there. Okay, so uh, many people are choosing, a lot of learners are uh, opting to study uh, using their uh, smartphones. Okay, so here I have the original sentence. Many people are choosing to learn using their mobile phones. And all I've done here is instead of saying many people, I'm being a lot more specific. I'm saying a, uh, a lot of learners, right? 
And then uh, instead of repeating the word learn, because I already have the word learners, and we shouldn't be repeating the same word, even if it's a different word form like person, noun, or uh, verb, uh, you should be using a synonym. So here, instead of learning, I'm using the word study. And then, of course, another way to say mobile phone is uh, smartphone okay so discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this trend so um, explain the benefits and deficits of uh, this method okay of this popular method trend is kind of it's a popular system or a popular method so here I'm using two words to describe one word instead of trend it's a popular method um, and provide your own uh, perspective so give your own opinion provide your own perspective okay and of course uh, use uh, clear logic and examples uh, from your own life. Okay, so that's kind of like use explanations and examples from your own experience. So this is how you want to do it. The original one reads like this. Uh, many people are choosing to learn using their mobile phones. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this trend and give your own opinion. Use explanations and examples from your own experience. My paraphrase a lot of learners are opting. Opting is just another way to say choosing uh, to study using their smartphones. Explain the benefits and deficits of this popular method and provide your own experience. Use clear logic and examples from your own life. Okay, good. I've got a good paraphrase there. Now, just keep in mind that this is not the introduction. That would be too easy. Okay, so a band um, 6.5 or higher introduction, you have to do more than just try to paraphrase the question. Okay, I wish it were that easy, but it's not that easy. Uh, you have to do more. You have to give clarity. Okay. All right, uh, let's see what some of our uh, viewers, what some of our students are saying. All right. So, uh, Shub Sharat, uh, watch the lesson here. Shub Sharat, I can see that you're complaining about your writing score. Um, and, uh, yeah, you have to be very careful with your writing. It has to really be uh, good. So, okay, um, let's see. Uh, Lemia, one of our members, uh, has this paraphrase here. And, you know, I usually look at some of the writing from our viewers and give you feedback uh, so that you can all learn from it. Many mistakes are very common. Okay, so here Lemia says certain individuals opt to get their education. We usually don't count it. Education through their cell phones. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, discuss the benefits and deficits and give your own opinion. Uh, give explanations and examples using your own past. Okay, good. Yeah, let me, it's not bad. Um, definitely you have accurate paraphrasing, so you should have clarity of what you're writing. Just a small correction there. All right, let's see what Jum Shidbek Sabarov has. Again, the key, so this first step is not too bad. Um, the key is just to paraphrase accurately without adding or removing information. Jumshid Beck says, most individuals would rather acquire knowledge about how to use, utilize smartphones. Okay, that's confusing. I don't think that's what the question's asking you. So most individuals... Um, or yeah, I don't know about most, but many individuals acquire knowledge, acquire uh, classroom uh, knowledge, uh, utilizing their smartphones. Deliberate the merits and demerits of this development and provide your provide 
your, uh, instead of notions, I would say position. Okay, it's a little bit better uh, to paraphrase opinion than notion. Notion is like thoughts, but thoughts aren't quite the same as opinion. So, uh, jump said back, be really careful with your paraphrasing. Make sure it's accurate. Okay, that's a little bit, a little bit off. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's take one more, and then we'll go to the next step. Here. So uh, this is uh, Anahita. All right. Anahita writes, uh, a host of people are selecting to elicit knowledge using their cell phones and smartphones. Uh, don't repeat um, this. Okay. Uh, this essay will explore some benefits and drawbacks of it with explanations and examples from my own achievements, maybe. Um, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be an introductory paragraph, but if this were an introductory paragraph, it would be a band six, okay? Um, because um, uh, these kinds of template Introduction, introductory paragraphs don't get a high band score. They're too simple uh, for band seven or band eight. Okay. Okay. So this uh, type of template uh, introduction is a band uh, six because it is too simple. And we know this because we are IELTS examiners and we talk to IELTS examiners and they say the same. Okay, so it's a band six even when it's perfect. So if you have perfect English in this introduction, it's a band six because it's too simple for a band seven. Um, band seven essays are supposed to reflect uh, grade 12 and college level writing at least. And in grade 12 and college level writing, uh, you will very quickly discover that you do not write paragraphs like this for the introduction. Okay. So uh, it's good paraphrasing, but not good for the introduction. The only reason we're paraphrasing so far is just to make sure that we understand the question, the task two question. Okay. All right. So uh, having said that, um, we're going to uh, check out the uh, second step here. Okay, you can see that my camera's maybe a little bit frozen here. Okay, uh, let me see if we can unfreeze it. <clears throat> All right, just give me two seconds. So, here we go. Yep, <clears throat> I see that I'm frozen. Don't worry, as long as you can still hear me, you're okay. So, yeah. okay, there we go. Should be should be good now. Okay, hopefully it'll stop doing that. All right. Okay, um, so let's go to step two. So step two, once you have the paraphrasing, uh, step two is to identify the uh, topic and the controlling idea of the question. Okay. So step two, identify the uh, topic and controlling idea of the question. Okay, so the topic, simply put, and this is a very, very important step, students, because if you don't do this and you write about the wrong topic, uh, then uh, you're going to get a low mark. So topic, when you think about the topic, think about what is this essay about, okay? So what am I writing about? Um, so what are we discussing? Uh, what's the topic here? 
Ghazi says the topic is learning of use smartphones. Ghazi, I think you kind of have the right idea, but um, uh, you're not expressing it clearly. Uh, Sanjay says cell phone learning. Yes. Yeah. So mobile, uh, so, or we could say learning uh, via mobile phones. Okay, so this is the topic, everyone. This is what we are uh, talking about here. And let's use uh, that, that color. Yeah, that's a good color for it. So um, it's not just uh, unboxing uh, masala. It's not just method of learning because we're not talking about other methods of learning. So you should not be writing an essay that discusses a lot about learning in the classroom uh, at school or uh, learning on the computer desktop um, but here we're really focusing on uh, learning with a mobile phone okay so uh, let's um, uh, let's then discuss what's the controlling idea so Okay, uh, we all understand that now that the topic, the question topic is learning um, with mobile phones. So what's the controlling idea? The controlling idea, you can think about it as like the rest of the question, right? So in relation to the topic. So you think about it like this. What do we want to know or discuss in relation uh, to the topic? Okay. That's what you should be thinking about. And here, uh, clearly, um, it's the benefits and deficits. Yeah, so Jumshid Beck says the benefits and deficits of learning via a mobile phone. Absolutely. Always think about the original question. So it says advantages, disadvantages. Okay, so advantages and disadvantages of learning uh, via mobile phones. Okay, um, so now what we want to do is we want to think critically. Okay, so step three is think critically about the topic and controlling idea. Okay, um, so you want to ask yourself uh, what is learning uh, using uh, mobile uh, phone okay so what does that mean right and you need to define it because when you're discussing this in detail to your reader they need to know from the introduction what exactly learning with a mobile phone means to you Okay, so what does that mean? How would you define that? So if I'm an alien from another planet and I come down in the middle of the night and ask you, I came here for one question and one question only. What does it mean for you to learn using your mobile phone? Um, so what does that mean? What does that mean? Vishal means, Vishal says online learning. Okay, so I would say gaining uh, useful life information uh, for work, business, and pleasure uh, using uh, the phone. Okay. So that's that's what I would say. Let's see what you have. So e-learning, but what does that mean, right? E-learning. Okay, let's see some uh, definitions while I restart my camera here. Okay. So what does that mean? <clears throat> yeah, don't worry about the the freezing guys. Just focus on the on the lesson. If it freezes, I'll fix it. It's not a big thing. It's a USB related issue that I'll deal with later. But for now, don't worry about it. Okay. All right. Um, so let's see. Um, tech uh, world says being acquainted with technology to make our work faster and comfortable. 
Um, Pavan says social distancing. I, I'm not sure. I think a lot of you are really going off topic. I think you have to keep it simple. So when you're thinking logically, uh, think simple. Okay, so think simple. All right, you have to think simple. Okay. Okay, so I think learning through mobile phones simply is gaining useful life information for b work, business, and pleasure using the phone. Okay, uh, now um, <clears throat> the next question then is, of course, why? So this first question answers the what. So what is learning uh, with a mobile phone? And um, the answer is this. And then, of course, the next question is why? So uh, why do people use their mobile phones for learning? What's the reason for that? So what's the answer? And this, of course, if you're thinking about it, um, then you realize that this is the benefits, right? So this will be the advantages as well. Okay, so now we're thinking about the advantages of using the mobile phone. So uh, Sanjay says saving millions of dollars. I don't know how you save millions of dollars, Sanjay, using the phone, but you might be saving um, some money. And uh, Sanjay says comfort. Okay. Uh, Divi says anywhere, anytime available. Okay. Um, yep. Kambadi says more comfortable, more accessible. Ghazi says because people can get information through phones quickly and conveniently. Unboxing says it's time saving and more convenient. I like that definition. So it can save a lot of time. And money, it provides access to a lot of uh, information via the internet. Okay, good. So, sure. Now, again, um, when you're doing this for the IELTS, keep it simple. Your answer should be one clear sentence. And when you're thinking about the why question, okay... Uh, really focus to come up with uh, measurable ideas like time, okay? Because that's the easiest to explain to my reader. Clear explanations, good explanations get high band scores, okay? So if I can explain to my reader that uh, learning um, math on my mobile phone by watching a YouTube video saves me one hour of traveling to school every day uh, or to a tutor, then uh, that's clear information. Okay, it's measurable. So anytime that you have explanations where you can use numbers to give clarity, it's going to be a much better essay. If you keep writing, well, it's convenient, I can learn anywhere, anytime, it's like, great, but what does that really mean, right? So um, anywhere, anytime, you can learn on the moon using your mobile phone, you can learn underwater using your mobile phone. Um, some places don't have a Wi-Fi signal, right? So you have to be careful, you have to have clear information, okay? All right, um, and then, of course, the next question is how. So um, how do people uh, learn using their mobile phones? Okay, and you need an answer for this one as well. So uh, hopefully you're answering kind of uh, similarly um, as what I'm saying. So uh, accessing the Internet... Um, for video, audio, and text materials provided by teachers and experts from around the world. 
Okay, um, so good. Now we've answered the topic, right? So learning using the mobile phone, um, which is uh, basically uh, gathering useful information for life, for school, for work, for pleasure, for entertainment. Um, why? Because it's convenient. Um, it saves a lot of time. Often it saves a lot of money as well. There's a lot of different resources options. You can provide. You can access uh, very high level information from experts, right? And then how um, accessing the internet. And when you think about the how and you think about the answer, it's always a good idea to also think about one simple example that you can use in the body paragraphs of your uh, task two essay. So think of a simple example that you can use in your task to essay okay so my example here would be uh, learning uh, English uh, from YouTube um, and uh, having a an English uh, conversation uh, partner um, with or uh, through uh, WhatsApp, let's say, for example, or Messenger. Okay, so that could be an example of your learning with a mobile phone, like what maybe some of you are doing right now, right? Learning for the IELTS using your mobile phone, and you can use that as an example in your body paragraph. Okay, so, well, at this point, as a quick, clever thinker, you're like, okay, I know what it is, why it is, how it is. But this question, the original question, never forget the original question, right? Uh, many people are choosing to learn using their mobile phones. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages. Now, we've kind of discussed the advantages because we thought about the why people do this. Right, but we haven't discussed the disadvantages. So, uh, what are the uh, drawbacks of uh, learning uh, with a mobile phone? Okay. So, uh, and that's a question, right? So, let's see what you come up with um, with your good critical thinking. So. Uh, what are the drawbacks? So what are the negatives? What do you think? So why why might we not want to learn using um, a uh, mobile phone? Okay. Uh, Anima's life says, yes, easy distractions. Okay. And why are these, uh, you know, think about why are these uh, distractions easy? So why do we have these easy uh, distractions? Okay. Um, Anahita says visual impacts, but what does that mean? Eye problems, Suman? I don't think so. I don't think eye problems are the top five. Okay, um, easy distractions, yep. Yeah. So why? Uh, because of notifications, but there's also another reason for those distractions. Um, notifications, advertising. Um, and the environment. So uh, just keep in mind, right, visualize. So when you're thinking about your ideas and when you're planning, it's really good to visualize. If you visualize a student sitting in a classroom, then, of course, that student is paying attention to the teacher and they're focusing and all of the other students in the class are as well, hopefully, because it's a learning environment. So it's a quiet classroom which is designed to optimize learning, right? When you have a mobile phone in your hand, you're often not in an environment that's optimized for learning. You could be in a loud restaurant. 
so you're not in an environment that's optimized for learning. Does everybody kind of get that, right? Okay. So your environment isn't ideal. It's not perfect for learning. Um, what else? Midjan says, we lose natural quality education, but what does that mean? Okay. Anahita says, the information could be inaccurate. All right. Um, yeah, possibly. Also, um, it's not perfect for a lot of lessons, right? So it's it's small, okay? So sure, um, the mobile phone, you know, it's a good learning platform. But at the end of the day, when you're typing an essay, um, obviously your mobile phone isn't going to be ideal for that. And that's kind of funny because we're literally learning to type essays, right? So if you're using a mobile phone and you're watching this lesson, hopefully uh, when you have some more time today or tomorrow, uh, you will actually uh, type this essay on your computer or PC or use a pencil and paper and uh, write it by hand, okay? All right, so... Um, there are certain kinds of restraints. All right, so now... Uh, we have the positives, okay, so we have uh, advantages, disadvantages, okay, um, and keep remembering the original question. Okay. Um, what I mean by that is uh, here you still need to answer what is your opinion. Okay. Okay, um, so what's your opinion then? So if learning with mobile phones has uh, advantages, disadvantages, um, then uh, what's your opinion here? So okay, I can save time, I can save money, I can learn in a lot of different places. Uh, and make use of my time. So if I'm sitting on a bus, but at the same time, I do get easily distracted when I'm learning on my phone. There are certain types of tasks or learning that are very difficult for me to do because at the end of the day, it's a small device in my hands. So what's my um, what's my overall opinion about uh, mobile phone learning? Okay, so I would do this. I'm just guiding you through this, and I'm watching your comments there. Anahita says its benefits outweigh its drawbacks. That's okay, Anahita, but it's not. We're not being asked um, about that. Do the benefits outweigh the negatives? This question is not about that. Uh, Pima says I think people can use their free time when it's a good advantage for them. Okay, Karna says, I don't know. Unboxing says it puts an adverse effect on individual and community. Um, so I would say uh, learning with mobile phones is useful, but should not replace... Uh, traditional uh, classroom uh, learning okay so that would be my opinion hey yeah it's not a it's not a bad idea it's good that we have mobile phones it's good that we can access information quickly when we need it and we can learn from it but it shouldn't be used as um, a replacement 
uh, for traditional learning. So if you have the option, for example, to uh, watch this class that you're watching right now and use a computer, use a laptop or a PC so that you can type your essay and you can practice your touch typing, then probably you should take the extra minute to start your laptop and not necessarily uh, watch the lesson through the mobile phone, right? Just because it's more effective, okay? So you should not be replacing other methods of learning with the mobile phone. That would be my opinion, okay? We can have different opinions, but based on these advantages, disadvantages, that's my opinion. So now I can write my thesis statement, which is the argument or the position of the essay. Okay, um, so let me do this a little bit differently. So based on all of this information that we've now gathered, okay, um, so here's my thesis statement. I want you to write a thesis statement. The thesis statement comes basically from your planning and it structures your essay. So your thesis statement shows the reader what this essay will be about, shows the reader what body paragraph one, body paragraph two will be about. So <clears throat> the benefits of learning with a mobile uh, phone is um, effective use of time and money. Uh, but the drawbacks are uh, poor uh, learning environment and uh, tool. Okay. Uh, and then I can um, keep my opinion uh, until the end. Okay. And I don't need to say that this essay will discuss. So the benefits of learning with a mobile phone is effective use of time and money, but the drawbacks are poor, uh, are a poor learning environment and tool. Okay, sure. That's all I need. I just need a clear thesis with parallel grammar where I have clear direction. Okay, let's see if anybody else has a clear thesis here. Practicing writing a good clear thesis is key to getting band seven or more. Okay, keep that in mind. So, being able, and this is very, very important. So, uh, being able to write a good thesis statement is key to band seven and higher scores. Okay. All right. Um, so Elizabeth says, I believe the benefits of learning with smartphones is very effective use of time and money and the negatives. So Elizabeth, keep going. Okay, right with me, students. Ghazi says, although learning by phones is unreliable in some cases, I think it is more comfortable and saves our time and money and we can access info quickly. Uh, the second part of your thesis, Ghazi, is a bit convoluted and uh, crowded. Too much information there. So try to simplify that second part of your thesis statement a little bit, Ghazi. Uh, Nitin writes, uh, mobile learning is also known as M learning and is a new way to get access to a variety of content available online through the use of mobile phone learning is the easiest way for students to get help. Uh, Nitin, it's confusing, it's unclear, you need to simplify it and you need to have clear direction. Okay. All Rounder says this essay will discuss both merits and demerits in forthcoming paragraphs. All Rounder, I don't need to know what your essay will discuss. Just discuss it. Okay, that is not a good introduction. It's not even an introduction. It's just a template that somebody put online and it can be used for any question and it's not going to get a good band score. Okay. All right. Um, all right, uh, so let's uh, let's get into the introductory paragraph. Okay, the introductory paragraph has uh, three parts. 
Okay. So as you probably have uh, heard uh, me say time and time again, the introduction has a hook. Okay. So introduction has a hook uh, plus background plus thesis. Okay, it's these three parts that go into an introductory paragraph. And yes, if you want a good band 6 or an easier band 6.5, if you're going for a band 7 or 8 or even a band 9 on your IELTS task 2, you need to have a standard introductory paragraph. Standard, it's not Adrian's body paragraph, it's not Adrian's introduction, it's not mine. It is the standard paragraph of English literature. And I think that, you know, many students who learned from me throughout the years when they got to college and university and started to write essays and learn to write essays, I think a lot of them are probably thinking, yeah, Adrian said that. <laughs> Adrian said that, that would, that's what would happen. So the hook is an interesting statement that introduces the topic, okay? Hook. It's called a hook because it's like a fishing hook. It catches the reader, right? So a hook catches uh, the reader's attention by introducing uh, the topic of the question in a clear, simple, and interesting way. Um, and it, you know, don't make mistakes with the hook. Keep it simple. It's a nice, you know, way to just start the essay. So here, the topic of the question is learning with mobile phones, right? Now, what's an interesting fact or statement regarding learning with mobile phones, right? So here we go. Uh, billions of people uh, learn information daily using mobile phones okay and I think that just a simple like let's count that right it's uh, uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine it's nine nine words not even ten words right the average English sentence in writing is 12 to 14 so this is well below the average it's only nine but it's a fact. It's simple. Um, it introduces the uh, the topic, right? So we have learn information, mobile phones. That's the topic of uh, this essay, and it's an interesting fact. Um, I, I would I would not be surprised if it actually is billions of people. I, if billion people every day learn some piece of information through their mobile phone, okay? So simple, to the point, it's a good start. This kind of sentence tells the examiner that, okay, this person read the essay question. They know what a good introductory paragraph should start with. And they have a clear idea about the topic. Okay. So background. Okay, and this, by the way, remember what I said, good planning leads to quick writing. It's because all of this information before that I planned just now, and in the real IELTS exam, this is happening mostly in my head. I'm just taking notes. But when I'm practicing at home, this is how I practice at home. Okay, in the real exam, I don't have time to write all this down. Remember I said you have about five minutes to plan your essay. So you can write down some of it, like write down the paraphrase, write down some of the why question answers okay and you're planning because you can use it later and if you're doing the computer based exam for the IELTS it's very effective because you can even uh, copy cut paste okay the different parts of your planning into the essay like watch this okay um, so remember how we talked about uh, what is learning with a mobile phone it's right here this was my what is learning with a mobile phone 
And then I said that uh, the answer is gaining useful life information for work, business, and pleasure using the phone. So watch what I can do. Okay, and you can literally do this in the computer-based IELTS practice exam. So I'm just going to copy that, right? Because the background is a definition. It defines the reader's understanding of the topic. Does everybody understand that about the background? So here's my hook. Okay, billions of people uh, learn information daily using their mobile phones. And then here's my background. Okay, background. Um, background is, to make this clear for you, the background is definitions and importance of the question. Okay. Okay, so it, it uh, provides the importance for the discussion as well. And this is where good planning uh, becomes handy. Okay, so watch this. Remember, I just grabbed that definition. So billions of people learning information daily using, uh, or, sorry, billions of people learn information daily using mobile phones. They uh, gain useful life knowledge. Okay, I don't want to repeat information. For work, business, and pleasure uh, using the phone. Okay, using smartphones. Okay. Um, and then the now I just need to give the importance. So why is this important? Well, it has a major impact on people's development, right? And this has a major impact on individual development and success, right? So the way that we learn, the way that we use our time is extremely important, right? So it basically shapes and forms our development, who we become and our success, the jobs that we get, um, the uh, projects that we complete. Uh, so it's all based on our learning methods and systems, right? Okay. All right. Um, and then comes the thesis. So now the thesis. And again, once I have a well-developed um, essay, I can just take this and put the thesis in. Okay. So basically here is my introductory paragraph. Notice how I can just piece it together like a puzzle. Okay, billions of people learn information daily using mobile phones. They gain useful life knowledge for work, business, and pleasure uh, using smartphones, or we can even be more specific, using smartphone apps. And this has a major impact on individual development and success. The benefits of learning with a mobile phone is effective use of time and money, but the drawbacks are a poor learning environment and tool. Okay. Now, because it's a first-person essay, um, I can make it first-person, in my opinion. Okay? In my opinion, the benefits of learning with a mobile phone is effective use of time and money, but the drawbacks are a poor learning environment and tool. So I'm using the first-person voice, the my opinion, because the essay is asking for my opinion. What is your opinion? Okay? So what are the drawbacks? All right. All Rounder says, in this cutting edge era, cell phones play a vital role among the people. Most of the learners are using uh, mobile phones for study purposes. All Rounder, it's a bit general. Try to be a little bit more specific to the question. Okay. Hun Hun writes, um, the reason an increasing number of individuals learn uh, by their phones that they save their budget and time. This is the effective way for reaching their goals in study and work. Okay, not bad, Hun Hun. That second sentence, Hun Hun, it seems 
unnecessary. You're not really giving any extra knowledge. Every single sentence in your IELTS task two should have purpose. It's a very important tip. You should never have a sentence that does not have clear purpose and value. Okay, uh, keep this in mind, students. This is an important tip here. Let me take it all the way back to the top here. So, uh, when you're thinking about band seven, eight, band nine essays, uh, keep this tip in mind. Okay. Um, every sentence in your task two essay must have value, should not just repeat information or go off topic. Okay, keep that in mind. It's a very important tip. Okay, so uh, let's uh, move on to body paragraph one. Uh, what is body paragraph one going to be about? So what do you think? Based on my thesis, so in my opinion, the benefits of learning with a mobile phone is effective use of time and money, but the drawbacks are a poor learning environment and tool. So uh, body paragraph one, what do you think will be the uh, paragraph here? Uh, Chai and Kip, no, go, that's, that's a strange approach. So saying that uh, learning with a mobile phone can uh, save trees from being cut down, it's a it's an awkward argument to make, okay? Yeah, Jumps it Beck says it's the benefits, it's the advantages, Ghazi. That's right. So you always go in the same order as your um, thesis. So if your thesis says uh, benefits of learning as point one, then that's going to be uh, body paragraph one. Okay, um, <clears throat> if um, I have uh, drawbacks, uh, then that is going to be my body paragraph uh, two. Right? So that's body paragraph two. So I need to have the same order uh, of paragraphs as the order of statements in my thesis statement. That's one of the um, goals of either your thesis statement is that it outlines the structure of your essay. Okay, so body paragraph one, body paragraphs, topic sentence. Um, topic sentence is a clear definition of your point one. Okay, benefits of learning is my point one, effective use of time and money. That's my topic sentence. And then I'm going to have explanations and examples. Okay, and maybe a linking or connecting sentence. All right, so my topic sentence, uh, effective use of time and money. I need to define that. So uh, what does that mean, right? Uh, what does it mean to um, uh, use time effectively? Okay, so let me kind of give that topic sentence and then you know you can give yours. I'll take a look. I keep looking at the uh, at the chat to see what you're coming up with as well. So my topic sentence here is um, Okay, and here I'm just visualizing. So mobile phones allow learners to maximize their use of time throughout the day by giving opportunities for cheap and free uh, learning in uh, many uh, different uh, situations without the need of a structured, the need for a structured uh, classroom. 
Okay. So that is my topic sentence. That is a definition of effective and cheap learning. So mobile phones allow learners to maximize their use of time throughout the day by giving opportunities for cheap and free learning in many different situations without the need for a structured classroom. Now comes my explanation. Okay, uh, so the explanation basically it has to give a clear, logical, rational um, explanation of your topic sentence. So it's like if you're talking to an alien and the alien's like, well, "What do you What do you mean you can learn anywhere?" Right? So <clears throat> so a mobile phone fits easily into the pocket of the user and uh, can access uh, video and audio content through apps like uh, YouTube and Spotify. Uh, with an internet connection. to uh, listen for lectures and instructions on just about any topic. Okay, so that's my explanation. And now here I'm kind of moving along and I'm just showing you, okay, uh, topic, sentence, explanation, example, right? So uh, keep reading, keep rereading. When you're at home practicing, uh, the more rereading that you do, the better. Catch mistakes, fix them. So mobile phones allow learners. Now notice how I'm not using future tense like will allow. Okay, I'm keeping my essay in present tense. It's very important to do that. So mobile phones allow learners to maximize their use of time throughout the day by giving opportunities for cheap and free learning in many different situations without the need for a structured classroom. A mobile phone fits easily into a uh, pocket into the uh, pocket of the user and uh, can access video and audio content through apps like YouTube and Spotify with an internet connection to listen uh, to lectures and instructions on just about any topic. And then you can use a first person example, okay? Because the uh, question is asking you for your opinion. So um, I prepared for much of my IELTS exam on the uh, bus going to university uh, watching uh, academic IELTS help or English help on you why not right um, on YouTube okay so I uh, I prepared for much of my IELTS exam on the bus going to university uh, watching academic uh, English help on YouTube okay and that gives a uh, clear explanation and example for that topic sentence. So now we know what the benefits are. Okay. And the connecting sentence. However, I did not always uh, find this learning. Uh, effective. Okay, that's my connecting sentence. All right. Let's see what people are writing. Um, Mal is asking examples must be personal. Uh, yeah, I mean, Mal, look at the question, right? So always look at the question um, for task two. And in this task two, uh, the question says, uh, use uh, ex explanations and examples from your own experience. Okay, so from your own experience means that this uh, essay is looking for personal examples. So yeah, first person personal examples, right? So that's why I'm uh, giving this example, right? Okay, so then uh, now I can lead into body paragraph two. And body paragraph two will have the exact same structure. Okay. 
So we'll have a topic, sentence, explanation, and example. So now, um, the negatives, right? We know that we need to write about the negatives. Zarina, I can see that you're writing at the palm of your hands, like when using a podcast for studying while uh, waiting in a long queue, no time is wasted. Uh, Zarina, just like in the speaking section, do not use the second person voice you. So in task uh, two essays, you should not be using the word you. Just like in the speaking section, you should not be using the word you in the palm of my hands. Okay. Now, Harrison, uh, careful, we're not talking about YouTube as an optimal learning platform. So we're not talking about apps, but we're talking about phones, the mobile phone as a learning tool, right? Um, apps like YouTube, they're not just for mobile phones. YouTube is used on computers. They're used in classroom teaching even, okay? So careful with that. Hi, Suchith. Welcome to the class. A little late, but better late than never. Okay, so body paragraph uh, two. <clears throat> Uh, so here, you know, if I visualize, I know that interestingly, it's the same properties uh, of mobile phones which give it its advantages that also give it its disadvantages, right? So that it's small and that it's portable makes it uh, in somewhat a good learning tool, but it also makes it a bad uh, learning tool as well, right? So... Uh, why? Because it's small, right? So not everything can be done on a mobile phone. Like you wouldn't do uh, graphics uh, work, for example, on a mobile phone. Okay. So <clears throat> the qualities of uh, learning with a mobile phone... that it is small and portable also uh, create disadvantages such as being distracted uh, during uh, lessons and limiting uh, functionality and limiting functionality. Okay, so this is going to take some explanation. And I can see that my camera is uh, getting a little bit stuck and unstuck here, which is uh, it's a USB-related issue. And it's a little bit of a finicky thing that I will fix uh, after the class. This is my mobile setup. I'll be back in my home studio uh, tomorrow, by the way. So that will be fixed. Um, so don't worry about it. Uh, for now, okay, I'll just keep kind of re-initializing uh, the camera for us. All right, don't worry about it. Um, okay, so uh, again, the qualities of learning with a mobile phone, that it is small and portable, also create disadvantages such as being distracted during lessons and limiting functionality. Okay, so um, explanation. Okay, uh, during uh, lessons, uh, notifications, and advertising distract from the, um, or I don't want to say distract again, so I'm going to use take attention away from the uh, flow of information. Okay. Um, in addition, it is difficult to accomplish tasks such as writing essays on such a small device. Indeed, Oh, sorry, I should say this is my example here. 
indeed I was not able or I am not able to uh, practice uh, task to uh, IELTS essays on my uh, way to university. Okay, so here I'm using the same uh, example as my previous body paragraph. Okay, let's try this one more time here. Okay, yeah, USB keeps getting kicked out. It's a fun part of Windows. All right, so um, here, uh, now I have uh, my uh, second body paragraph with the same structure as my first, okay? So the qualities of learning with a mobile phone, that it is small and portable, also create disadvantages, such as being distracted during lessons and limiting functionality. During lessons, notifications and advertising take away attention from the flow of information. In addition, it is difficult to accomplish tasks such as writing essays on such a small device. Indeed, I am not able to practice task to IELTS essays on my way to university with my phone. Okay, so good. So now I have my introduction, my body one, my body two, and I'm ready for my conclusion. Now the conclusion also has three parts. It has the points restated, argument strengthened, and a take home message. So that's the conclusion. For the IELTS, start by writing in conclusion. So in conclusion, mobile phones allow for an affordable and convenient uh, learning experience. Okay, notice how now I can use the words affordable and convenient because now the uh, reader knows that I'm talking about the time and cheap classes. Okay, so affordable and learning uh, and convenient learning experience. Now, here is my argument strength strengthened. Okay, this has uh, clear benefits. Um, and negatives uh, for uh, learners because they can maximize their use of time but also be um, but also have a less effective um, lesson let's say okay so this is my argument strengthened so again in conclusion mobile phones allow for an affordable and convenient learning experience this has clear benefits and negatives for learners because they can maximize their use of time but also have a less effective uh, lesson okay ultimately i think that mobile phones Uh, provide a good additional value uh, for knowledge acquisition, but they should not replace formal classroom education. Okay, so there is my conclusion. Okay, and that finishes my essay. Uh, let me read the original question and the essay now. I kind of did a quicker finish here just so you see how when you have all the information, it's correctly organized, you can put it all together and hopefully it'll make sense. Um, so here's the uh, original question. 
Many people are choosing to learn using their mobile phones. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this trend and give your own opinion. Use explanations and examples from your own experience. Billions of people learn information daily using mobile phones. They gain useful life knowledge for work, business, and pleasure using smartphone apps, and this has a major impact on individual development and success. In my opinion, the benefits of learning with a mobile phone is effective use of time and money, but the drawbacks are a poor learning environment and tool. Mobile phones allow learners to maximize their use of time throughout the day by giving opportunities for cheap and free learning in many different situations without the need for a structured classroom. A mobile phone fits easily into the pocket of the user and can access video and audio content through apps like YouTube and Spotify with an internet connection to listen to lectures and instructions on just about any topic. Um, I uh, prepared for much of my IELTS exam on the bus going to university watching academic English help on YouTube. However, I did not always find this learning effective. The qualities of learning with the mobile phone that it is small and portable also create disadvantages such as being distracted during lessons and limiting functionality. During lessons, notifications and advertising take attention away from the flow of information. In addition, it is difficult to accomplish tasks such as writing essays on such a small device. Indeed, I am not able to practice task to IELTS essays on my phone to university uh, with my phone. In conclusion, the or in conclusion, mobile phones allow for affordable and convenient learning experience. This has clear benefits and negatives for learners because they can maximize their use of time but also have a less effective lesson. Ultimately, I think that mobile phones provide a good additional value for knowledge acquisition, but they should not replace formal classroom education. Okay, so that's your essay. That's about 300 words, maybe 320 words, okay? And notice that it's just very structured. So it's a very step-by-step -step system. And on the IELTS, this is what you have to learn and this is what you have to produce. It's just this very step-by-step -step system of writing. Introduction with uh, hook, background, thesis, body paragraph one with topic sentence, explanation example, connecting sentence, body paragraph two, topic sentence, explanation example, and then conclusion, key points restated, argument em emphasized, and then a take-home message. And when you have this, you basically have the recipe for this kind of uh, task to persuasive essay writing in the first person voice. Now, I know that's a lot of information and I know that takes practice to achieve, but that's the idea, okay? So I hope that... Um, that uh, that's clear um, okay students so any questions about this task two or any of the tips or points that I've just given you do you have any questions for me about this okay and again while you're asking me your questions uh, this lesson is coming to you from uh, aehelp.com okay so for academic IELTS check us out there and for general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. These are basically our course materials, our textbooks for this classroom. So if you want to learn effectively and have effective learning, then definitely uh, go to our websites, uh, check out uh, those uh, materials. Sign up for our premium IELTS package. This is our general IELTS website here with the green background. You click that big red button. And again, we're uh, partners with IDP British Council IELTS. Um, and we're also partners uh, with um, 
with a lot of other educational schools and entities that teach IELTS. So this is our uh, general IELTS, or sorry, this is our academic IELTS website here with the blue background. You want to click that big red button there. Okay, let me look for these questions, see uh, what questions you're coming up with. Okay. Um, so AJ is asking, can we write uh, to advantage body paragraph one? Um, yeah, you can. So you, you can write multiple advantages. I mean, we wrote about effective um, use of time and money. But be careful, the more points you have, the less clarity you're going to have. Because... Um, you basically run out of time and space, right? So, Sanjay, the yes, you can write more than one advantage, more than one uh, disadvantage, um, but uh, keep in mind that if you have a lot of different points, then um, you're going to have a less time for good explanations and good examples so the essay won't be clear. It's like you have a lot of points but not as much clarity. It's better to have fewer points with lots of clarity. Okay, So that's the important answer there. It's better to have fewer points with lots of clarity. Okay. Um, topic sentence. Yeah, the topic sentence takes practice. Somebody's asking me, how do I write a topic sentence? When you write a topic sentence, think about, like, how can I give a clear definition to my reader about this. So in, in our case, uh, we wrote about uh, saving uh, time and money with um, using a mobile phone for learning. So think about, you know, how can I make that clear? What can I write about this point? How can I define this to write about this more clearly? Okay. And that's really the topic sentence. It, it takes a lot of practice. Think about definitions. Okay. All right, everybody. Uh, I'm going to stop there. If I, if you have more questions, that's great. Okay. Uh, send me the questions uh, with uh, email. Okay. So um, you saw my email address. Send me an email, and um, I will be happy to answer questions. Uh, for you. I will be back tomorrow um, with um, IELTS speaking part two, speaking part three, and I'll be back in my home studio. So we won't have the camera freeze, hopefully, <laughs> like this. Um, and uh, make sure to practice your task two, uh, planning, okay, writing, reviewing, all right? Make sure to practice all of those. I'm Adrian. I am signing out from beautiful Couch and Valley for today. And I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you, Carolina. Thank you, everyone, for your contributions. Um, let me see if I can give you a wave goodbye here with uh, <laughs> this camera paying a little bit of uh, homage to the lesson. All right. There we go. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Have an awesome day. And I'll see you tomorrow morning. I'm Adrian. Bye for now.